to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. All right. Okay. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Wi-Fi's. Welcome back to yet <laughs> another underground and under renovation episode of the wireless woman go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video why because when you like this video well i love it i love it and if you haven't already go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content and that is really what you want to do okay okay this summer <laughs> you want to be over here with me on the wireless woman I know I know it's been a long a long time coming but this summer lineup is going to be worth it worth your time so i came on here to do a little pre-game i'm super excited because this week i have <laughs> the troll stroll ambassador himself bro diallo coming on the channel and this is a podcast i've actually dreamed about for a long time i consider myself a fan of no man however however I definitely have been inspired, <laughs> inspired by the revolutionary, not reactionary content of Bro Diallo. Disturbing to me how little the black community understands about culture. We want people to value our culture, but we don't value our culture. Black people, the crack epidemic was genocidal biochemical warfare. And the Negroes, the Uncle Toms, the race trader sellouts who facilitated the distribution of our oppressors' biochemical warfares in our communities are looked at as folk heroes. He's done a lot of work before I came into this space and onto this scene um, that really lays a groundwork and a foundation for where I feel like really all of us as black people need to be right now. So I'm super excited to welcome him onto the channel, but I wanted to share some insights with my own audience prior to him coming as to why this interview was so poignant and so important for me to do right now. So I have become, and probably this is just as of late, during the pandemic really was when I had the time. Ooh, I had the consorted time and ability to jump into, you know, black history and black content. And I'm a deep believer in a lot of things, but I'm a deep believer that black people who are really, really, you know, on this whole post-racial, we're not black, we don't see color anymore, kick, have simply just failed to, to know their history. You know, whether that's a systemic issue or a personal choice. Once you really sit down and delve into black history in this country, there's really no way that you can can walk into the world without a broader sense of self-awareness. And so this is really going to be an interesting conversation for me in general because Bro Diallo and I are almost diametrically opposed. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it by any means necessary. As, as diametrically opposed as two black people can be because blackness is not a monolithic thing. And I think that people like me who weren't necessarily born in the 50s, 60s, and 70s to see how blackness in this country has evolved don't understand that there were <laughs> several different factions of black thought, black belief systems, black value systems that have brought us to where we are now and the melding of a lot of that the melting of it down is what has caused us to kind of lose some of the characteristics of blackness 
So, I am a black nationalist. And most people don't know how that's different from Pan-Africanism. For a long time, I just kind of thought they were all the same thing. But Bro Diallo's a Pan-Africanist. I am a black nationalist. He is an atheist. I am still a Christian. I mean, you know, it, it, it takes a certain definition for me to still fit it, but um, he's an anarchist. And as I'm learning more about anarchy, I, I, I think that's a super neat school of thought. It's the secularism for me that throws me a little bit off because of my Christian belief systems. But I am a feminist. And as a feminist, I have to abandon a certain amount of my Abrahamic Christian worldview in order to embrace those thought patterns. But we, he's a vegan. And I ain't even going to say what I eat because, you know, yeah. But I'm going to say that, you know, I feel like the greatest service I can do for black people and general and black women in particular on my channel is to show different viewpoints because I think the answer is not to minimize blackness in order to embrace all these other value systems I'm a democrat I'm a republican I'm conservative I'm liberal I'm I think it's about expanding blackness to fit all of those things so that we can have and find more solidarity and unity as black people. I think it's these polarizing aspects of blackness that have been <laughs> the problem for the movement. Even in antiquity, even in history, it's been the divisions between us. You even saw that with Martin and Malcolm. When Malcolm turned that page and said, hey, even I can't make this about the nation of Islam if it isolates me from the plight of my people. You know, we are going to have to, as he said in a very um, famous speech, I'm going to reference that in here. Were we to come out here discussing religion, we'd have too many differences from the outside, and we could never get together. So today, though Islam is my religious philosophy, my political, economic, and social philosophy is black nationalism. You and I keep our religion between ourselves and our God. But when we come out here, we have a fight that's common to all of us against the enemy who is common to all of us. Religion, gender, politics, these things are going to have to come secondary in order for black people in America See, this right here is why I'm a black nationalist. You know, that whole pan-Africanism is, is cool until some Africans get over here and they're not black. So, I'm not even going to say historically what has worked for black people, what has caused us to have unity, doesn't have merit. But moving forward, we're definitely going to have to create a machine that is going to be able to combat white supremacy as a thought, belief, political, spiritual, social, economic system. And the only way we can do that is to expand, not constrict, not contract the blackness, but expand it to be able to fit not just black people within it, but also other marginalized groups like <laughs> women. Mm -hmm. Like other minorities, you know, like uh, religious minorities. If we can expand the blackness to be that, then it can be a culture that can be something that is attainable for other people. Because as of right now, and I don't care how this makes anybody feel, because feelings, your feelings are not always facts. But as it stands right now, the blackness is all that's standing between <laughs> total global domination of white supremacy y'all ready for this everybody <laughs> want to be white everybody wants to be able to check that box everybody wants to be able to say they're anything except black um and 
blackness as a power structure is losing a lot of foot footing. And for me, I don't actually care. I can sing Kenny Chesney with you like I was born deep in the heart of Texas. I could really care less. But what I'm understanding is that the blackness as a concept ties in all of the oppression of the world, the oppression of women, the oppression of immigrants, the oppression of a lot of people are tied up in the black struggle. And I, as a black woman in the diaspora that has actually been around this world and talked to other black people, other people who wanted to connect with blackness as a consciousness, as a, as a power structure, have said that they said black Americans y'all have gotten more y'all have done more for the diaspora of blackness than any other group of people and like I said I know it's gonna make some Africans mad but I said what I said <laughs> we would not have found ourselves enslaved in America if Africa had embraced its destiny and been the superpower that it could have been instead of doing what we're doing now which is assimilating and succumbing to white supremacy, colonization. You know, these things took place in our homeland prior to us getting here and having to take it on without, mm -hmm. as Malcolm X tried to go and secure, uh, without the backing of the African support because that's what, that's what he got killed for. He got killed because he was asking for Africans to take the case to the Geneva Convention that blacks were being held as prisoners of war in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to get reparations for us. Trying to get us, give us us free. Give us free. And so I think to a certain extent, because we have lost these narratives, because we're not having this conversation anymore about how black people have come to the place that they are now of being these millionaires, billionaires. Um, we've, we've, the breadcrumbs have been eaten and we've lost our way back. We've lost our history, but the only thing standing between, you know, just global white hegemony, as Diallo would say, is blackness. The blackness is the only vehicle that can be used to fight worldwide oppression. And it's the one vehicle at this point that everyone, even black people ourselves have vacated. And I think that America is the battleground, if you will, for black and white supremacy. You know, this is the place where all of the fight came to the foreground. And that is why I myself have deemed myself a black nationalist. I'm not going to vacate America and go back to Africa and leave this to the people who stole it from a whole other group of people that honestly black people need to align themselves with. Instead of us coming into these spaces and aligning ourselves with everyone else's special interests, if we would make the blackness something that everyone else could get inside of, we've already done the work. Most of the Title IX uh, civil rights work that gave rights to everybody else, the LGBTQIA plus community um, to uh, Asian communities, you know, that, that helped change a lot of the immigration laws, that was black people fight for rights. And every time we have stopped that fight for rights, whole other groups of people get displaced because they don't have a system, a power structure that is formidable enough to take on white supremacy. So most of the time we all, including black people, just assimilate. So those of us, like myself and Bro Diallo, who are still in the black fight, who are still looking to, um, who are still looking to revolutionize black power as being a political, socio-economic force that gives people a haven from oppression. We're still doing that work, 
but we are not all completely agreed and aligned on how to engineer those solutions. And I think black people have to continuously be having these conversations about how to innovate these processes. What are the best ways? What is the most unifying ideology that we can all get behind? And how can we then infuse that ideology with the, the culture, belief systems, and values that we share as people so that we can get what we want? And the most poignant, probably the most poignant demonstration of that lack of understanding, organization, and nation-building work came when we had Black Lives Matter. That circus buffoonery. They asked us. We had them on the heels. We had white supremacy on its heels, and they asked us, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want from us? <laughs> And baby, we didn't even have an answer. We were like, uh, defund the police. Uh, 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 reparations. Yes, yes. We want uh, reparations. We Because we're not doing this nation building work. We're not having these conversations. So I myself am elated, ecstatic to be able to infuse my voice into this ongoing discussion and to have an... Um, and to have, you know, an ambassador, you know, of black thought like Bro Diallo come to the channel, it really signals a shift in my content for me. There's a lot of people who judge me by my content, but that is not the full scope of the work that we do. Just like with Bro Diallo, the work that he does on the ground, in the communities, doing actual nation building gives perspective <laughs> to some of these internet just hotel gangsters that hadn't actually put a foot down in their community. So I'm looking forward to rubbing elbows with like-minded people. You don't have to agree to walk in agreement. And I'm inviting, I'm inviting the wireless public. Y'all know this is season three wireless world order so i'm inviting you to join this conversation with us we will have live interactive chat where there will be questions you know and like i said i i, I plan to press diallo okay and i would like my followers you know people who may be new to the channel to do it as well because we have different perspectives but within the gambit of black consciousness all black people fall within it so you may resonate more with certain things that I say or not. That's actually okay. You may resonate more with things that he's saying and we may actually resonate with each other. You never know. But these are the conversations. These are the challenges that we have to be willing as black people to take up if we're going to be nation builders. You know, I hear a lot of our people resisting that. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. But baby, you are. You either gonna own or be owned. You either got a plan, you know, everybody has a plan till they punch it in the face. But you have to be prepared to a certain extent. Even not even to just be successful, but to even be sustainable. <laughs> you know, we're gonna be completely exterminated as a people and black consciousness is gonna completely disappear and it along with everything that they did to us. And when that happens, oppression can continue. I can't fully remember the saying, but it says people who forget their history, they're doomed to repeat it, whatever, whatever, whatever. So this is about keeping this blackness, these, this understanding, this conscious understanding of oppression alive so that we can stamp out the propagation of it for generations to come. If you see what I see, but if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments and make sure until I see you again that you stay unplugged, unbothered, so that we can be unleashed. Look forward to engaging with you in those comments. Go ahead and clock out. That's liberation and baby I want it